Well, for more on today's blast in Baghdad, in the Iraqi capital, we're joined by Raid Jarrar, who is the senior fellow with Peace Action, who's joining us via satellite from Washington. Mr. Jarrar, as always, thank you for joining our broadcast. Now, it's said that these attacks are revenge for the killing of three Al-Qaeda leaders, which was considered a big blow to the militants. Now, how were they able to regroup this quickly, if the latter is indeed true? I mean, does it not beg the question who's really backing them up? Yeah, these are speculations. Uh, I think uh, today's attacks were an example where how uh, the attacks are not sectarian or religious. Uh, we saw how uh, dozens of Iraqi Shiites and dozens of Iraqi Sunnis uh, were attacked. I think the attacks uh, motivation uh, is obviously not sectarian or uh, religious. Uh, the, it's the, uh, the attacks motivation is more to destabilize the country. Uh, to destroy the Iraqi political process that is uh, very fragile now, and maybe to justify uh, prolonging foreign interventions, uh, including the U.S. presence or other interventions. Uh, so I don't think anyone can uh, give uh, you know, a, a, a statement that this is for sure Al-Qaeda or this is for sure you know, a regional country or whatever. Uh, no one knows because we don't have enough investigations in the country. So I think it's just an assumption to link this to uh, the attack against, against Al-Qaeda a few days ago. Well, sir, some have said that the, the aim of here was more to show that the current government, the Iraqi government, is weak and is unable to handle security issues on its own. If that was really the aim, how successful or unsuccessful were the militants taking into account that Iraq is still very much an occupied country? I think whomever is behind the attack is trying to uh, demonstrate that point. And I think, uh, the, unfortunately, uh, the Iraqi political process uh, is deteriorating because of the uh, you know, many reasons uh, that we're facing now uh, and many obstacles to building the new government. And the Iraqi security situation is uh, fragile and it's not strong enough. Um, so uh, whomever is behind the attacks is, uh, of course, showing the weakness of the Iraqi government and the weakness of the Iraqi armed forces. And I think what they are hoping to do is to push uh, an agenda to justify a longer uh, occupation or longer, longer intervention from other uh, countries. Because I think the argument out there is that if the Iraqi, uh, if Iraqis are not ready yet, we should continue the occupation. Uh, or if Iraqis are not ready yet, we should exercise our uh, you know, regional intervention in Iraq. Uh, and uh, this is an extremely dangerous argument, and it allows uh, these attacks to be more relevant to uh, the, the Iraqi political process. So I'd like to pick up on that point you just made. Um, these ongoing attacks, what do they say about what the future path should be in Iraq? I mean, does this support the view that coalition forces need to stay longer, as you mentioned, or that Iraq needs to be left alone to be able to handle its own security? I think where we stand now uh, with the U.S. plan to withdraw, uh, the current U.S. plan to withdraw is time-based, not condition-based. Uh, Bush, uh, President Bush's plan was a condition-based plan. Uh, whenever Iraqis are ready, we will withdraw. Whenever Iraqis stand up, we will stand down. But uh, the current plan that is based on the bilateral agreement between the two countries is time-based. So it does not have it to do anything to do with conditions. It's not supposed to. Uh, the plan is not supposed to get delayed or cancelled based on conditions on the ground. Uh, I think there are some powers to be, uh, those who uh, wish ill to Iraq or uh, the U.S., uh, those who uh, are benefiting because of the occupation, they are trying to go back to a condition-based plan. Uh, because that is, uh, you know, in their benefit, uh, and it's in their benefit to uh, destabilize Iraq uh, further, uh, to actually keep the U.S. occupation and other, other interventions longer. Uh, but where we stand now, I think there is a lot of pushback uh, from inside Iraq and inside the U.S. People do not want to go uh, to an endless war. People want to stick to the plans for complete withdrawal. They don't think that these attacks should be used as a justification to prolong the U.S. occupation or justifications to prolong any type of regional or neighbor uh, intervention in Iraq's issues. Uh, sir, um, you made this point earlier and that you may dispute it, but some within the Western media do see these attacks as sectarian violence. Now, um, 
Previously, although like you mentioned as well, all Iraqis, irrespective of sect, have been targeted in all attacks. Um, is there then an attempt by certain powers to, to keep this idea of sectarian violence alive within Iraq? Of course. Uh, I think today's attacks are an example of how uh, Iraqis are being targeted, uh, not because of their sects, but rather because of uh, them being Iraqis. And I think the motivations are obviously political and military, not sectarian or religious. But I agree with you that there are many uh, English-speaking media and some uh, you know, other uh, regional powers who are so invested in uh, framing the conflict in Iraq as a sectarian conflict. They are so dogmatic that even when an attack happens that kills 50 Sunnis and 50 Shiites, they say, oh no, it's sectarian. Even when uh, Al-Anbar, uh, which is, a, you know, presumably a Sunni, uh, uh, pr uh, you know, uh, province, votes 80% of the province for uh, votes for a Shiite, who is like uh, Iyad Allawi, uh, they still say, no, there are some sectarian lines out there. So I don't think we, we do have these divisions in Iraq as strong as they are portrayed in the Western media, in the English-speaking media. I think many people wish that the divisions were there, All but right. I, I think uh, Iraq is Gerard, I do apologize, but uh, we that, will uh, the divisions have are more to political. leave it there as we're running out of time. Raj Gerard, senior fellow with Peace Action, joining us there via satellite from Washington. Sir, as always, thank you very much for your insight.